guys, Willie here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2024 Subaru Forester Wilderness. And a big thanks to Tony at Subaru of Port Ritchie for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car or SUV in the Port Ritchie area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Tony. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Forester has been Subaru's compact crossover SUV since 1997. That's when the first generation was released. The fifth generation Forester that you see here was released in 2019. Facelifted in 2022, and for 2024, the Forester is available in six trims, ranging from the $27,000 base all the way up to the $37,000 Touring. Here we have the Wilderness, with basically the exact same features out of the Touring a little bit less, but it's much more off-road capable with a $35,000 base price, or right beneath $35,000. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, for the Wilderness, we have this all-black trim up front with the blue Subaru badge forward-facing camera beneath that, tow hook to the left, LED projector headlamp with a daytime running strip running right up top. LED fog lights as well. Radiator, no intercooler because we don't get the two and a half liter turbo or 2.4 liter turbo charged four cylinder engine, just a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated boxer. All 2024 Foresters are available exclusively with this power plant made it to an eight speed line driven CVT transmission. Anyway, we can take a step out to the right this is the reason we go for the Wilderness trim is this wheel and tire setup. We get these black 17 inch rims wrapped in Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires. Dimensions being 255, 60 R17s. Hopefully you guys can get a good look at this tread pattern. It's pretty aggressive for this class of SUV. The 60 sidewall tires should keep the ride quality also super plush. And the 225 wide tires with this four wheel drive system should be more than enough to put the power to the ground. We had a Subaru Wilderness badge right in front of the mirror. Blacked out mirror, LED turn signal on it. Blind spot monitoring on the glass and the glass fills up the entire frame. We get a subtle stripe running all underneath this window trim, all black window trim with some orange contrasted roof rails. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera and a massive sunroof up top as well. The pillars are all blacked out. We get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. Sorry guys, the service department just fired up that 1970 something Ford F-150, so let's make a little bit of noise. But anyway, we get this gold Forester badge in the lower rocker panel side skirt area with more plastic cladding over the wheel wells. We have the same thing up front too. You can't really tell that much with the black paint color with the white paint color. This would definitely contrast a lot more. Yeah, keep revving it, bud. Anyway, out rear, we get the same rear wheel and tire setup. The only difference is a smaller brake caliper. We get a five lug pattern, no LED taillights incandescent for the top part and halogen for the reverse light and turn signal area. We have the blacked out Subaru all wheel drive, symmetrical all wheel drive badge for the wilderness trim. Forester is also blacked out with Subaru wilderness right underneath. Shout out Subaru of Port Ritchie in Port Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. We have the third brake light up top, shark fin style antenna, get a good look at the exhaust sip and rear parking sentiment. Speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this 2.5 liter boxer four cylinder and hear how she sounds. All right guys, that was the sound of the two and a half liter Subaru boxer four cylinder engine sold by Subaru for the 2024 Forester Wilderness and it sounds okay cranking out 182 horsepower, 176 pound-feet of torque. Doesn't sound like a whole lot, but with all-wheel drive made it to this eight-speed line-driven CVT, you can expect zero to 60 in around eight seconds, which is actually solid considering the almost 3,700 pound curb weight and the power specs that we have here. Anyway, what you see is basically what we get. We get an aluminum piece connecting the two strut towers together. That should help the handling a little bit. We can shut this hood right down. I also like that matte black stripe for the hood. It'll pop a little bit more with a different paint color, same with this blacked out grill and mirror caps, but I still think it looks super clean, even with this black paint color. Taking a step inside, well, before we take a step inside, let's hop over here, check out the windows so they can see everything that we get in this 2024 Subaru Forester Wilderness Edition with a base price of 34,920 bucks. We do have a few options here. We'll take a look at them in one second, but you guys can pause, take a look at all of the standard features and we do get quite a bit considering a sub 
$35,000 base price. For $18,50, we get the option package 22, which includes a Subaru Starlink 8-inch multimedia navigation system with the Harman Kardon speaker system too and a power rear gate. $695 for the auto dimming mirror with compass and home link and the extended auto dimming rear view mirror. $162 the rear seat back protector totals us out at $38,922 after a $1,295 destination charge. We mentioned the smart access for the driver and the front passenger. Taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So first thing you see on the door panel is this leather stitching. It says Subaru Wilderness on it, and the soft touch continues even for the frame of this door panel. We get this faux carbon trim around this plastic door handle, but more leather stitching for the actual armrest, which is pretty soft. Solid amount of storage, auto one touch for the front windows and a power window out rear. Four-way adjustable mirrors, solid amount of storage. You'll fit a foot long with no problem. You got your caution and attention and information over there. You'll fit a big gulp in this cup holder. And as we mentioned, we get the Harman Kardon speakers. A subtle Subaru nameplate as we step inside. The seats are super comfortable. The headrests say Subaru Wilderness on them. We get that gold orange contrast stitching with blue contrast stitching as well. The seats are also super comfortable and well bolstered for the compact SUV segment. You have lumbar control, you can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats all electrically. But taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So foot on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. But first we notice is the steering wheel. For our compact SUV, this is a very sporty wheel with gold contrast stitching, nine and three fits perfect in your hand. Solid 10 to bolstering notch and the frame of it is gold. The horn area is rubberized. There's a person out in front of us right now, so we're not gonna honk the horn. Actually, yes we are. Really loud and aggressive horn. People will definitely be getting out of your way. We'll do a window check real quick. We do not get dual panes, but a still thick single pane of glass. Volume and skip controls on the left side of the steering wheel, source and information. You can hang up and answer your phone calls too with voice commands. On the right side, radar cruise control, active steering, and you can adjust the sport and individual drive to the right of it. We get paddle shifters, they're plastic controlling the eight speed line driven CVT, auto headlamps, fog lights, no auto rain sensing wipers, but wouldn't be expected for a sub $35,000. SUV. We also get these specific gauges for the wilderness. The tack goes to 6,000 RPM and it says Subaru Wilderness underneath the 3,000 RPM marker. The speedometer goes to 150 miles an hour. It's labeled up to 140, but it does continue a little bit past it. We also get this 4.2 inch LCD display. It's adjusted to the buttons underneath the left side of the steering wheel so we can adjust it between trip A, trip B, hours, digital speedo and the fuel information, tire pressure if you're driving to see it, and right back to where we started. Awesome, my personal favorite would be a digital speedo, so leave it there. Beneath that, we can see an outline of the Forester, and as I step on the brake, you can see the lights turn on and off on the Forester. Turn signal, doesn't work for the turn signal, but for the brake, it does work. Cool, so you mentioned 6,000 RPM TAC, 140 labeled speedometer. To the left of the steering wheel, we have our trip reset. I'll zoom back out for you guys. The stocks have a satisfying click. Tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Interior brightness, you can open and close your lift gate. And you have the memory function for the height. Well, actually, this button opens the lift gate. This adjusts the height for it. You can also turn off the steering responsive headlamps. Beneath that, you can turn off the traction control, engine start, stop, you can disable, and you can turn off the blind spot monitoring as well. The air vents are outlined in this flat black plastic material, but it feels very premium with stitching all throughout with a soft touch dashboard. We have two separate screens too. The top screen shows the clock, climate control, outside temperature, fuel level, and average MPGs, as well as your instant MPGs. Beneath that, we have our eight inch touchscreen with navigation. The map, as you see, is pretty high resolution. The response is solid. I'll give it like an eight and a half out of 10. It's not perfect, but definitely good enough. The volume dial has a pretty satisfying resistance. Same thing for the tune. And we get hard buttons for the shortcuts for the radio, map, apps, and you can skip the media down below. Awesome. One thing I also like about this multimedia display is we can check out the back of the camera and it'll take up the eight inch touchscreen with guidance lines and trajectory, of course, and rear parking sensing. But we can also press this button behind the gear selector and now we can see a forward facing camera simultaneously also with parking sensors. Really impressive feature, but only the backup camera has the trajectory. This might be my favorite feature, honestly, in this vehicle. Here you can see both cameras at all time. That'll help tremendously, especially off-roading. 
Throwing right back in park, we immediately return right back to the previous screens. Beneath that dual zone automatic climate control with the vent controls in the center, sync, mode, AC, max AC, awesome, the hazards right above. We have a pretty solid storage cubby too. You could fit probably two, maybe three phones in there with leather stitching for where our knee will often hit. Two tiers of leather stitching, top notch premium interior so far. We have our snow and dirt, deep snow and mud mode, so they are illuminated both up top over here and in our center gauge display. So we have our grade pitch and roll that gets automatically adjusted. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. It's a little bit tough with the glare from the sunlight. And when we go back to the deep snow and mud, hopefully you can see the differences. Really not a whole lot, but I'm sure when you're in the deep snow and mud, it does change things up pretty significantly. And all you have to do to return back to normal is just push the brake pedal automatically decompresses a little bit. So I think it adjusts the electronics in this vehicle tremendously, depending on which mode here you're in. We have an electronic parking brake with brake hold. The button to access the forward facing camera can be accessed at all time. You don't have to be in the backup camera screen. And you press it one more time and you return right back to where we were. We have heated seats for the driver and a front passenger too. Gushy soft center console armrest. The center console is spacious. You'll fit probably two or three one liter bottles of soda you may be able to fit a two liter in there with a 12 volt two cup holders in front you'll fit 24 ounce bottles no problem and a nice spot for a phone or a wallet the stitching for the dashboard continues the glove box is hard plastic it is pretty well damped decently spacious you'll fit 20 license plates in there with no problem massive auto dimming frameless rear view mirror with three garage home link settings on it the interior lights are led SOS, you can turn off the lane keep assist and you can turn off the forward collision alert up top. Interesting locations for those two. We have a sunglass holder as well. You can turn off the door lights. The visor has this extension to it and it lights up, but it's not LED. And we mentioned that we have this massive moonroof or sunroof. It's not a panoramic, but it is huge. Check out the size of this. One thing I like about this moonroof is you can open it up manually so if you're not patient you don't have to wait for the thing to open or close and you can use your arm or check this out you press and hold for a second and now it automatically opens up with the shade as most sunroofs with shades do even the ones that don't have automatically opening ones and it's a massive opening check this out it goes into the second row and we're not done yet boom it goes even further out definitely one of the largest openings in the business we can poke our way out of here Beautiful day today in Port Ritchie. It's sunny and 83 degrees according to this force. Press and hold for a second and now it closes automatically with the shade. Now that's an impressive feature that it can close open with the shade while keeping this manual function. We'll keep the shade open so when we hop out back, you guys can see how much light is brought into the cabin with that massive panoramic moon. We can hop out of here and do exactly that. Hop out back, see how much space is offered back here as well as the quality of the material so that leather stitching continues it says Subaru wilderness on it the materials up front though are hard plastic but to be expected for the price point the windows are not auto one touch but they're still power windows gushy soft leather armrest with solid storage beneath that you will fit either two foot longs on top of each other or some snacks candy bars with a 24 ounce bottle in front of it additional Harman Kardon speaker subtle Subaru nameplate as you step inside with plastic foot plates so you don't completely dirty up this interior the rear seats are still that super premium faux leather materials with contrast stitching blue contrast stitching here and gold contrast stitching behind it super comfortable seats as far as legroom i'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and i still have five six inches of knee room for the compact suv segment that i've reviewed on this channel this is without question one of the most spacious available we have two tiers of glove boxes behind both of the front seats, air vents, that's also appreciated, and we get two USB-A ports. It'd be nice to get USB-Cs, but this is the final year for this fifth generation Forester. The sixth generation will be released next year for 2025. The center console or center cubby armrest, you gotta jab your hand into it, but it's decently soft. Faux leather trim, two cup holders, you'll fit 16 to 24 ounce bottles, depending on the shape. The lights out rear, are LEDs, nice and impressive, and a ton of light brought into the cabin thanks to this massive sunroof. It's not a panoramic, it's only a single panel. Before a single panel, this thing is huge. The grab panels have hooks on both sides of the rear seats, that's nice for a suit or a dress. We'll hop out towards the cargo space, see how much space 
is offered back there and then take this 2024 Forester Wilderness out for a drive. So underneath the Subaru badge is the button for this power opening lift gate. It opens up pretty quickly. The opening is massive. And the cargo space, it is competitive with the compact SUV segment. Since the rear legroom is so impressive, we are going to compromise a little bit of the cargo space. The step in is decently low. I'm a little bit over six feet tall. I'm about an inch away from the step in. So if you have older or smaller pets, they shouldn't have too much of a problem hopping back here. And there is a lot of head space for them. You fold the rear seats down 60-40 split. I'd expect you to fit, honestly, a 60 to 65 inch TV back here. The wheel wells don't protrude that much and the floor here is large. I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly how much storage space is here in the cargo space. And with the second row folded down, you get a Harman Kardon subwoofer, latches to fold the second row seats down as well. 12 volt, that's nice. If you have like an electric cooler, you can plug it in. And even after like a six, seven hour trip, you will have fully cold beverages or food when you arrive. Secret storage, we have a little bit of it above the spare tire area. You can lift this foam up and check out the spare tire. Cool. That's about it though, guys. We get the cargo cover too to shut the cargo or trunk up. You can press either of these two buttons. This one closes the trunk. This one also closes the trunk, but locks the vehicle afterwards as well. Anyway, we press the button. It gives you like half a second to a second to get out of the way so you don't get duped in the head if you got groceries. But that's about it though, guys, for the inside and outside of the 2024 Subaru Forester Wilderness. It is a really nice looking SUV, especially with these beefier off-road tires, making it a lot more off-road capable. Performance-wise, let's take this 2024 Forester Wilderness out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2024 Subaru Forester Wilderness. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My first impressions though, the brake pedal is very responsive. The steering is very well weighted. We'll see if it changes up when we get to some higher speeds. And at low speeds, the throttle feels responsive. And remember, with an eight seconds zero to 60 time, it doesn't sound very quick, but considering the power output, 182 horsepower, 176 pound-feet of torque, this feels surprisingly strong. I wouldn't be surprised if Subaru underrated this power plant. With about third throttle, we get to highway speeds with no problem, and at highway speeds, you don't hear a lot of wind noise and the road noise with these all-terrain tires surprisingly non-existent steering at higher speed still feels responsive it gets a lot lighter than when we're just not moving but it still feels fine all right guys we can try it out in sport mode we were in intelligent mode to start it off we'll see if anything changes up the steering does feel a tad bit heavier the throttle feels a lot more responsive just tapping it shoots you at about 2500 rpm ride quality barely even feel the bumps these 60 series all-terrain tires definitely help all right guys taking a step out here we can lean into it a little bit more about half throttle not going to blow you away you can definitely feel the line driven cvt artificial shifts it makes it feel a little bit more like a conventional automatic but you can definitely feel that it's still a cvt Again, at higher speeds now on concrete pavement, you still really don't hear a lot of road noise. For a about $35,000 base price, this vehicle has a lot of isolation and premium materials to it. We'll see how it is through this turn. Try out these paddle shifters too. Ooh, definitely feel the gear changes. The steering feels really good and responsive. Very linear feeling steering. And the line driven shifts happen pretty quickly. All right, guys, we can take it out on this twisty road, throw it back into the manual shifts. Pretty quick response. The brakes feel really good. Rev match downshift, throwing it in. Not a lot of body roll. You do feel a little bit, but it's definitely limited. Steering still feels really good in sport. Responsive CVT, not real shifts. It doesn't keep you in the manual shifts. If you stop using the paddles for more than like five or six seconds it throws you right back into automatic but yeah it's pretty nimble especially for a more off-road oriented suv really can't complain with the handling you try out a turning radius test for an off-road capable suv i do expect it to be pretty sharp even the outback wilderness which is longer than this had a really impressive turning radius and we're going to get about an extra half inch of ground clearance here too at about 9.2 inches but coming back out here 
nice nimble steering feels really really good even with these thick beefy all-terrain tires all right guys get on the highway we'll try out one more acceleration Ooh, definitely responsive yeah, you can definitely feel a pretty decent surge of power once you cross about 4500 rpm no it's not going to blow you away in terms of performance you don't buy a four-cylinder SCD to get blown away with performance. But as far as premium materials in here, this is a top-notch interior with a nice responsive touchscreen, leather stitching for the seats, leatherette stitching for the seats, stitch dashboard, Harman Kardon speakers, and a surprisingly heavy 2.5 liter boxer four-cylinder engine, all for a base price under 35,000 bucks. Not to mention the off-road capability. We have standard four-wheel drive, 9.2 inches of ground clearance, deep snow mode we have regular snow mode sand mode and mud mode different controls depending on the terrain all really impressive features for a sub thirty-five thousand dollars compact suv if that's what you're looking for guys i would definitely recommend checking out the 2024 subaru forester wilderness and huge thanks to subaru of port ritchie for helping make this review possible i'll leave a link to their inventory below and if you're looking for a new car or suv in the port ritchie area i would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Tony. And huge thanks to all of you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel and i'll definitely try getting those videos for you asap but other than that again thank you guys so much for watching and i hope all of you have a great day